Walter Burmeyer is the founder of Powder Project. He wrote three textbooks currently with over a million readers. Dr. Burmeyer spent some of his time promoting the open content of ideology. Am I right? Yes. Hello, my name is Jerry Barmeyer. I'm from Porto Project. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to present the front of this audience. And the topic of my discussion today is the maximum temperature in short period. The scheme is not in the computer case. So I will provide a short historical background and I will discuss the motivation and the aim of this uh, research. I will show a physical model and I will discuss the dimensional analysis of the process. I will compare between the current thought and the previous thought, and I will complete some of The A invented the shock tube in the late 19th century, and he invented because he wanted to find out how explosive act on, on things, on destroy things. Zabevich von Neumann saw him bunch of other people reinvent the shock tube in World War II. After that, there was a continuous development of shock tube, but I didn't see anything that is significant, that was outstanding, that I have to point out. The comment to all this thing that all investigation about shock tube was about how to destroy them, how to have atom bomb that was World War II, how to have big explosive before that. This research is motivated by doing, uh, looking on the civilian application of shock tubes. And one of the benefits that being the most visible, and uh, that Google and other entity saying that I'm the most visible in the area of mechanics of that I have questions from all around the world. And I get questions from Australia and I got questions from uh, Germany about the printing industry. Printing normally did when you spray some ink on the paper and then you bake it. And the baking requires temperature and you want to have very fast heating and you want to have very cold paper at the end of the process. Shop tube have the potential of doing it. On the other hand, in the car industry, people are discussing with me or they ask me about how to absorb energy. When you stop the car, you have energy and you want to move this energy to some place and then you want to reuse this energy. <coughs> so this is another area of potential of the shock tube. I got some question related to plasma and chemical reaction, but I have some ethical problem with the things that, or the application they have with it. So I didn't have any ending. So what is the aim of this uh, research is to find out what is the operational parameter of shock tube. For example, the pressure ratio between the two sides and to find the effect of geometrical parameter. For example, the length of the driver section and or the ratio between the driver section to the driven section. So what is the shock tube? <coughs> shock tube is a pipe that have two chambers that separated by a diaphragm. And in this case, we have high pressure in one side and low pressure in another one. I painted it in blue to indicate that the high pressure is actually the cold chamber, and the red to indicate that that's the hot chamber because it's going to be heated. After the diaphragm is erupted, the high pressure pushing 
the gas on the lower chamber, and when it's pushing, it's creating a shock wave. This shock wave propagates toward the right, and by doing so, it's increasing the pressure and temperature. This is well known and well documented. When the shock wave reaches to the other side, it's a reflective shock, and it's going backward. Here is the part that is the problem. When the shock wave reaching to the driver section, that's when the eating up of the potential energy that we can have to increase the chamber. <coughs> on top of that, we have some area that is or almost the entire driver area that is not fully used. So the first thing that you do when you do dimensional analysis Perhaps the previous speaker that was before me can pay attention to this thing that it's example when you do experimental research, you have to do a dimensional analysis. And when you do dimensional analysis, you have to look on this thing. In fluid mechanics, when we teach it, the first thing when you do dimensional analysis, you look on back, uh, pi, uh, back in hand pi theorem. And in back in hand pi theorem, you have the idea that you have to look on the parameter that we have here. And in this case, we have the volume, the temperature, the density, the pressure, the mass, and the length. And that's six parameters. And then what we do, we're looking on the basic fundamental parameter, which is the length, the temperature, the mass, and the time. And we're going to get four basic parameters. According to back in hand pi theory, that means we have two-dimensional scope. And then there is a question, is that correct? So in order to do that, we use professional method, which is Nusser method. And what Nusser method doing? To do that, we have to write the governing equation. And when you write the governing equation, you have to look on the process and decide what is the thing that contributes to the maximum temperature. In order to do that, you have the driver section which pushing the other side. It has to be isentropic and adiabatic. On the other side, you have to have only adiabatic, and it doesn't really matter if it's going to be isentropic, because this way you can extract the most possible energy that you can from the driver section to push the other one. And when you do that, and you write the governing equation, and you dimensionalize it, you're going to get four dimensional, dimensionless parameter for the driver section, which is dimensionless work, dimensionless length, dimensionless length when it's reaching the equilibrium, and you have the ratio of the heat ratio, which is K. That means we have four dimensionless parameter. And if you write the, the governing equation for the driven section, you're going to get additional four dimensionless parameter. And in total, we have eight dimensional parameter. That means we have two, dimen we have two dimension uh, dimensionalization group, uh, method. One is Beckingham pi theory, and one is Nusselt. And the question, they provide two, two different results. One provided two, and one provided eight. And clearly, that one of them is not correct, or it's not complete. Since we're using the governing equation, Nusselt method is the complete, and I believe that's the right way. Therefore, here I applaud those who are going to teach fluid mechanics. It's essential that our student will know what is Nusselt method, and essentially that if we want them to be professional and able to solve problems, they have to know this method. Let's go back to the, the presentation. So if you look on the process, you can see that if we have the rupture diaphragm, we have the part that is eaten up, the energy that is eaten up from the potential. We have part that is not totally used, and therefore we cannot get the full potential. In this case, we're going to get temperature in the range of 3,000 to 14,000 degrees. Very seldom that we can get to 18,000. If we will have what I call the moving diagram, when the diagram 
between the two sections just move to the right, then we have potential of getting energy of 100,000 to half a million degree, which is significantly larger. What I learned from this thing that shock you contain a large amount of potential energy than previously it was thought. That the source of the energy loss or the energy that can contain were identified, we know where it was lost or where it's not going to be used. And different <coughs> design is required to obtain this maximum. If we redesign the shock tube, we can use it. I would appreciate if you, if anyone will try to refer to this topic, will not use reference to this presentation, but to my book, because that my book is open content and this is not. Thank you very much. And thank you. Is there any question? Yeah, I have one. Uh, when you're talking about the short tube, uh, do you have any idea how to make it, how to build one? I mean, this is a theoretical analysis. No, that's not. Uh, oh, that's, this analysis it is theoretical. Yeah. But how to build shock tube? There is many, many, many techniques to build them. They are essentially you make a pipe, yeah. and between the two pieces yeah. of the two chamber you put diaphragm. Right. And when you have the diaphragm, you wrap it. And there is many techniques to wrap it. There some people using electronic method, some people using some mechanical things, and they let the thing go. And there is a lot of discussion how to get it the most. Way. What this analysis showed that if you instead of wrapped the, this diaphragm, you're going to have a, a adiabatic or insulate, insulative a diaphragm that can move with this thing and the weightless, then you're going to get huge amount of temperature that can go to very, very high degree, something <coughs> in the range of 100,000. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, as we know, the cost that you build a short tube is. Uh, what well, this show that if you, what I saw, there is one guy, I'm in Chicago, there is one guy who built this shock tube, and I think it's very expensive to build them the way how they're doing, it's very hard. But if you build with the moving shock, with the moving diaphragm, the price is going to go down because you're going to have less pressure to get the same kind of temperature. Okay. Thank you. So, I've been experimentally convinced that uh, you know, I mean, has someone done? Uh, the experiment with moving the diaphragm and uh, see that the, the temperature has. As far as I know, I saw similar thing to this thing when we when we were I was dealing with this kind of thing for the printing company. They try to do that. We don't really finalize it, but there's something that they thinking that that's going to make the process because the whole process is happening in microsecond, and you get in temperature of ten hundred. 10,000 degrees very instantly, but you let some other air coming in and the temperature drop to, to room temperature in instant. So you have really potential of backing it very quick and then cooling it down instantly and then you have printed paper coming out of your printer very nice. <coughs> I think the, the problem that I work with some car industry, they try to use it when they have the idea that you spend a lot of gas to accelerate the car, then the car stop, and they try to build something like this, but they have really difficult to come up with a moving diaphragm. But that's what we're looking how to do that. 